Hey Shag Kids, Curtis Tucker here, Shags, with the first official episode of A Shaggy Duck Life, the podcast that used to be called That Buzz Guy. Now I'm again trying to transfer everything into one simplified system, website, podcast, blog, and all that good stuff. So just wanted to throw on a random episode this week. I don't really have a subject other than the fact that today, December 20th, 2021, is my 59th birthday. So just wanted to talk to you guys real quick about uh, birthdays, age, health, a little bit of that stuff. And don't forget, uh, the new episodes are going to be a little bit more about journaling, behind the scenes of Shaggy Duck Studio, the stuff that I'm creating, the stuff that I'm doing. Try to give you guys insights into working for yourself, being an entrepreneur, but also being creative. Uh, episodes will have less to do with um, the how-tos of setting up blogs and podcasts. Uh, you can get all that in the prior seasons, and I guess we'll call this season three, uh, but basically season one of A Shaggy Duck Life. And so again, yeah, so it is my 59th birthday. I cannot believe it. It is just crazy uh, for me to think of myself as being 59 years old. I've got uh, one, my oldest daughter is a sophomore in college, and my youngest daughter is a freshman in college. I started having kids uh, at 39 years old and then had my second 17 months later, uh, right around the age of 40. And so started having kids late. I think that has kept me young. Uh, I've worked for myself for, um, I don't know, 15, 20 years now. I think that's kept me young. I really enjoy everything that I do. So I am kind of live a stress-free life. I think not having stress has kept me young, but um, and I don't want to brag or anything, but a lot of people that are just now discovering that I'm 59 years old are pretty surprised. They uh, thought that I was a lot younger, and I think a lot of that has to do with just my health, which is you know keeping kind of a slim build, you know, trying to not eat a whole lot and and you know gain weight. And uh, so I do seven. So I'm going to give you a quick, a little quick rundown on my daily routine. And all this has to do with, you know, work life and home life and parenting and, and everything at all. All of these things feed together your mental health, your physical health, your uh, job, your relationships, all of those uh, co-interact with each other. And so if you've got a balance uh, on all of those, then they help. Uh, influence the other thing. So, so basically at the age of 59, um, I can't remember the exact year that I kind of really started working out, but uh, the day that I started working out, I pretty much never stopped. Now back probably in my 30s, I, I used to work out. Um, it was more of a weight thing. I lifted a lot of weights, maybe, gosh, 90 minutes a day. I was in the gym lifting weights, and I'd probably, out of that 90 minutes, probably 30 minutes was uh, aerobics. I wasn't real heavy into aerobics, but now at the age of 59, I've kind of flipped that. And so, so my, daily, my daily routine is, is basically the same thing every day, um, but it's consistent and it's pretty simple. So uh, if you're really young out there listening or you're really old out there listening, it is never too early and it is never too late to start a routine of keeping yourself healthy. I wake up at 547 every morning and these days by about 620 I hit the trail and a lot of the times I'll run. So basically once I leave the house I'm usually gone uh, just a little over 90 minutes. So I, I'm out on the trail for 90 minutes every morning. In the warmer weather I will run and so when I run that usually amounts to almost seven miles uh, in the winter time because of the coldness and the the amount of layers that I have to wear and um, just the wind blowing in my face, you know, when you're running, it makes it even colder. So sometimes in the, in the winter and it's also dark outside, so I can't see as well if there's something on the, on the trail, but a lot of times in the winter, I'll just speed walk. And so I walk really fast and then I don't get seven miles in, but I still get 90 
minutes in. And so that's every morning. I mean, a lot of times, even if I go on vacation, I'll wake up and I'll go do a run or a walk on vacation. But um, I mean, it's it's got to be a blizzard or an ice storm or something to keep me off the trail. And then, even then, I don't not work out. Then I, I have a stationary bike that I'll go ahead and do the stationary bike. It is hard for me to work out inside because I've gotten so used to going out. And what I've learned is, um, even though I like, I think yesterday morning it was 10 degrees in Enid, Oklahoma, which it sounds really cold, but there was no wind, so it felt like 10 degrees, which was cold. I think the day before, I think it was like maybe 15 degrees, but there was a 20 mile an hour wind, and so that made it feel like, you know, 7 degrees, which um, the wind in Oklahoma can make a lot of difference. But even at those temperatures, I was still out trying to get my exercise in. And then what I do is after I've gotten some stuff done at work, before I take a shower, uh, my own, the only weightlifting that I do is I've got two, I believe they're 30 pound dumbbells. And so I do a hundred push-ups, and then I'll do a set of 25 curls with those 30 pound dumbbells. And then I'll do 15, uh, 15 or 20 squats with no weight. And then basically I do that set again. I'll do another 100 push-ups and then uh, another set of curls and then another set of squats and that's it. So that's my entire routine. Um, you know, the weightlifting, the push-ups and the curls, probably doing both of those sets probably takes me a total of 10 minutes at the most. And, and I'm probably overdoing the aerobic a little bit. I mean, um, I just, I like to listen to podcasts. I like to be outdoors. I like the fresh air. I like to clear my head. But then I also like to get out on the trail every morning and take pictures of the sunrises. And so the hour and a half is overkill on my part, but it also helps me keep, you know, any extra weight off. But um, so, so let's just say you went out and you walked or you ran for 50 minutes and spent the other 10 minutes um, doing some dumbbells and some push-ups and maybe some uh, crunches or something. I don't do any crunches anymore. But um, you, you could get a full workout that would keep you in shape in just an hour every morning. Again, the secret to that is consistency. You got to do it, you know, every morning for every day for the rest of your life. And, and so I've been doing it long enough that at the age, so I'm, I just turned 59, but um, several months ago I was 58. We had our 40 year reunion and um, because it was hot and I was doing a lot of running and I was really watching my diet. Right now, because it's the holidays, I'm not watching my diet as much. So I probably gained, I probably gained maybe five to eight pounds. But a few months ago when my 40 year reunion had come up, I think I was down to 155. And that is pretty near what my high school weight was. But now, um, you know, a lot more muscle than I had back in high school. Uh, not that I'm bulky or anything, but anyway, so uh, if you see me on the video or you see me around, um, I am 59 and it's uh, basically because I, I work out on a regular routine. And again, um, probably about 90, probably about 100 minutes a day is what I put in. I, I don't like doing my exercising in the dark in the winter, but in the summertime, it's light outside. But I love getting my routine done in the morning, and that way it's out of the way. Nobody can, you know, disrupt me. There's, there's just nothing going on that early in the morning. The phone's not ringing. I'm not getting emails. And so it's really, really easy to get your routine done if you'll do it in the morning. I know people are busy, and, and there's all kinds of excuses. That's why you've got to try to get it done early. If you go into work early, uh, that makes it really tough, but uh, try to do it in the evening. But just keep keep active, even if it's not every day, do it three days a week. I think that would really help you out. Um, but again, if you keep yourself healthy, if you feel good about yourself, that's gonna help your mental state. Having a good physical state, helping your mental state is gonna help your mind be able to work on being an entrepreneur, creating your business, being motivated to do things that you enjoy. And again, it all goes hand in hand. So I highly suggest that uh, you stay. And um, 
I'm going to say like, let's say you're listening to this podcast or you're watching this video on the YouTube channel uh, and you're 71 years old and you've never exercised in your life. It is not too late. Um, start today, uh, walk around your house and then tomorrow go outdoors and rock around your yard. And then the next day go to your neighbor's yard and then the next day and just keep going until you can go all the way around the block. And then, you know, two times around the block, but you've just, you've got to get started. Uh, you know, another, another thing that I can throw in here real quick is uh, I'm dealing with my, uh, aging mom and my mom is 81 and did not exercise a lot. She was a heavy smoker, uh, drank a lot of uh, soda pop, um, did not exercise. Uh, after retirement, sat in her chair a lot, did not get up and, and, and move and, and do a lot of stuff. And so she's dealing with a lot of health issues and uh, at this point basically can't get up on her own. Not only, you know, quit driving a while back, but is having trouble even just can't get up on her own to go to the restroom, has to have somebody help her. And so uh, if she were to fall, if nobody was there and she were to fall, she would not be able to get up on her own. And so, so what I'm doing now is not only to keep me healthy now and, you know, just give me that, you know, that feeling of, of overall health, but I know that in the long run, keeping healthy now or hopefully, I mean, maybe, you know, not always, but hopefully uh, that will keep me healthy into later age. So when I'm 70, 80, 90 years old, I can still get around. I can still walk. I can still get up if I were to fall down. Now, maybe not, but but that's what I'm hoping for. And so, um, so if you keep the weight off, if you keep your legs strong, if you keep your back strong, then uh, if you do need to get up, you can get up on your own. So it, it's just all that strength. And so I just know in my mind that I'm going to be working out probably until I'm bedridden or the day that I die. I'll just continue to walk. Um, and I did meet a gentleman uh, on, the, on the trail over the summer, and I believe he was 81, and he was riding a bike. And so... Uh, we would pass each other on the trail, and uh, we got to know each other, and uh, his name was Stan, and he was having a little bit of leg trouble towards the end of summer, and then he kind of disappeared from the trail, and then now it's gotten cold. I don't see him, so I hope he's going to, he talked about that, you know, he was going to try to stay active, and uh, I know as we get older, it, it's not as easy to just hop up from an injury and things like that. But uh, I would just highly encourage you guys to stay healthy and uh, it's going to benefit you immensely on all fronts of everything that you're doing. So anyway, so uh, it is, again, my 59th birthday. I am here in Shaggy Duck studio. I am loving the new studio. I think I'm going to really enjoy this new podcast, the new format where it's a little more about journaling. So uh, my birthday, December 20th, uh, always five days before Christmas. Uh, oh, big give. Let me tell you about the big gift that I got. Um, so I've got a blog post. I don't think I have the blog post on uh, curtistucker.com or a Shaggy Duck Life, the blog. Um, but um, I've always, uh, basically my mom got me interested in soda pop as a kid, which was Dr. Pepper. And we had this one restaurant that she would go get us a Dr. Pepper, a icy cold Dr. Pepper all the time. Then we were, you know, for riding around or going somewhere or going shopping. And it had extra sweet Dr. Pepper, but it had really great shaved ice. It was just really, really crunchy. And the ice was soft. And so it absorbed the Dr. Pepper. And so at the end of the cup, you had this ice that was almost like an icy or a slush a slushy. And so I've always uh, had a fascination and a love of really good ice. And then, you know, then uh, Sonic comes along and Sonic has that pellet ice, which isn't quite the same as the shaved ice, but it is really soft uh, pellet ice that soaks up uh, your drink. Now I quit drinking soda pops probably 20 years ago. Uh, and then here, this will feed into the being healthy. Um, 
you know, stay away from soda pop, uh, even diet soda pop, if you want to stay healthy and keep the weight off. So I gave up soda pop uh, probably 20 years ago, maybe longer. Uh, just one day, again, one day I woke up and I said, you know, I'm not going to drink any more pop. And I haven't, the really the only thing that I drink is iced tea, no sugar, no artificial f flavors. Um, I just enjoy a good old strong cup of uh, black iced tea and that's pretty much all I drink. So, um, so it's really, I, I really enjoy drinking iced tea with pellet ice. And so uh, over the years, depending on where I've lived and what stores or restaurants have had what we call good ice, um, I've always had a routine of, I, for, for many years when I, we first lived in this house that we're back in now, there was a convenience store not too far away. And so every morning I would go to that convenience store and get two 44 ounce cups of pellet ice. And, um, and then, you know, I would use it throughout the day. And then the next day I'd go get two more cups and, and basically did that routine until we moved uh, across town to the other house. And then my routine got a little messed up because there wasn't a place to get the really good ice really close. And so it was kind of hit or miss. And then we moved back over here. And um, so anyway, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to different places, trying to get ice, trying to get good ice. And so my problem is now solved on my 59th birthday because my wife has purchased a pellet ice maker, you know, a big professional, uh, really expensive um, ice maker. And so we're going to probably have it installed tomorrow or the next day. And then I will have unlimited amount of pellet ice. So if you live, in the Enid area, give me a holler. And if you need a big cup full of pellet ice, just call me and uh, you come by and get it. But uh, so anyway, probably the coolest uh, birthday present I think I've ever gotten. I'm really gonna enjoy it once we get it hooked up. Um, and so where was I going with all that? Uh, talking birthday. Um, uh, I don't even know where I'm going. This is one of those episodes where I just don't really have any, I don't have any notes. I didn't, didn't have a subject matter. I just kind of wanted to uh, throw this episode in there to talk about age and, and staying healthy. And uh, so, um, so that, you know, that was my birthday. We went out to eat. My kids are home. Uh, it is the Christmas holiday. So we're going to spend Christmas here and uh, it's always fun um, to have them around. As far as what's going to happen in the next year, so 59, and then just a, you know uh, less than two weeks from now, we're going to start a whole new year, which is going to be 2022. If you guys know anything about me, um, you know I like the number two. I was born 12 20, 62, and so I've always liked the number two, which means I was born on the 20th, so I also like the number 20, and then the number 22 has two two, so I've always liked that number. So uh, my Jeep uh, Wrangler has the number, I put a, a circle with the number 22 in racing stripes. It looks like Herbie the Love Bug, but I've got the number 22. Uh, and if you research the number 22, it is one of the most, um, I don't know, cosmic, um, good, lucky numbers out there. Uh, and so you just have to read about it. But uh, so I love the number 22. So anyway, we are coming into the year 2022, which for me, uh, fingers crossed, is going to be a fantastic year where every day uh, is going to be, you know, something really cool, something great. So I'm I'm putting out great vibes for the year 2022. I hope good things happen. And uh, so in 2022, I'm going to attempt to, it would be really cool if I got my book completely written. Okay, and so uh, how this relates all to the birthday is I'm, I turned 59 today and I feel like I'm just getting started on a lot of things. So a lot of people I know are thinking about retirement and sitting around doing nothing, but I'm thinking about what can I get started? What new projects can I do? What new jobs can I invent? And so uh, one of the first things that's gonna be coming out of Shaggy Duck Studio will be my book, and it's called uh, Banana Seat Squad. It's gonna be based, it's a, it's a fiction book, but it's going to be based on me and my buddies growing up in Enid, Oklahoma, riding our banana seat bikes and all of the adventures that we had back in the 1970s. Probably somewhere around 76, 77, it'll be that summer is uh, uh, when I'm going to kind of set the book and uh, going to have some adventures, some twists. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to go with it 
yet, but it's just going to be a fun book. The intent on writing the book is number one, to get the book out there, to have some uh, clothing and, and, and stuff to go with the book, but then also have a screenplay written and the book uh, as quickly as possible turned into a movie. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Hopefully I can get that done. Probably not within a year, but uh, I really would love to get the book written. So be looking for Banana Seat Squad coming to you soon. Uh, the real cool thing about following me on A Shaggy Duck Life is you're going to be able to follow me through that process. I've never written a book before. I don't know pretty much anything about writing. I don't know anything about writing a book, but... Uh, I am going to learn all of that. Anything that I learn, I will share with you guys. If you guys want to write a book, um, I'm sure I'm probably going to have to self-publish uh, because um, just not having any experience or any connections, I don't know that I could get it published otherwise, but I'll try and I will show you how I try and all that. So that's going to be one project that you can follow along the, in the upcoming year is the writing of the book. Another project is going to be, so my new uh, nickname is I'm going with Shags rather than That Buzz Guy. And so Shags, as Shags, I'm going to be doing some paintings. I've been wanting to do some l very large canvas uh, paintings of something really cool, something groovy, something maybe cartoonish, pop artish, but with a 70s vibe to it. And uh, I want to do some large paintings so I can sell those, uh, get prints done on those, and I can sell the prints and hopefully open up a, my own art studio where I display my own art. I think that's something that I can do as I get older if, if you know, I don't want to do some other things. I think as an older person, uh, there's really not you know, a lot of effort involved in art, and so I want to try to establish my name. You know, I've, I've done cartooning for years and years and years, uh, graphic design, and I have done, I did some pop art, but it was all done on the computer. It was uh, under a name that I called Wiener Duck Art, uh, some really fun cartoon characters and things like that, but um, this time I think I want to actually paint. I want to, I want to do some painting. I've done, I, I did do painting back uh, many years ago in college, a lot of um, poster size uh, watercolors, and those were fun, but I think I'm going to maybe go to some type of acrylic or a marker and do those on canvas or some type of board or something. But again, another process that you guys, if you want to know uh, a little bit about art, how art gets sold, how you make art, how you come up with ideas, follow along with this podcast, A Shaggy Duck Life, and I will give you insights into what I'm doing on the art front. So that's the second project that you can follow uh, the third project is the whole point of restarting my Shaggy Duck brand. And again, Shaggy Duck is a name I came up with in 2000. I was uh, starting my graphic design business online, and there was a lot of really creative companies out there that I was competing with. And so I was trying to think of, you know, I need this really fun internet name. I didn't want to go with something like Tucker Advertising or Tucker graphic design. I wanted something creative, something fun, because I knew that a lot of my work was going to be geared towards cartoons and, and more playful, whimsical type designs. And so um, I remember exactly where I was um, here in Enid, Oklahoma, sitting at a, a red light, and it just, it just came into my head, Shaggy Duck. And because I really have always liked Scooby-Doo, um, and so Shaggy was part of that, and then I kind of wanted to probably incorporate an animal. And my wife and I at the time had been buying a lot of little um, stuffed animals. And I always liked the animals that were a little nappy and shaggy. And uh, I had seen some, some bears and some ducks, and they were kind of, they were basically what you would call shaggy. And so uh, just all of that together, um, and I came up with Shaggy Duck, and so I bought the domain name Shaggy Duck in 2000, and my business has always been Shaggy Duck Studio. Even, even to this day, when I do billing for Enid Buzz or any of my other uh, spinoffs, the billing always go through Shaggy Duck, and so I've had that uh, for 21 years now. I can't believe it. So I wanted to get back to my roots of Shaggy Duck, and that's why... 
Um, I'm dropping some of all of the buzz names and that buzz guy, and I'm, I'm going back to Shags and Shaggy Duck, trying to bring all that back together. And so, um, so I'm also wanting to do a lifestyle and clothing brand with Shaggy Duck. Um, and it's going to be, uh, think of um, probably a combination of um, Life is Good and Billabong and um, some of those surf brands. So basically, um, you know, I, unfortunately in Oklahoma, I am not a surfer, but I've always been fascinated by the surf and skateboarding lifestyle. And so it's just gonna be kind of a fun, outdoorsy, sun, um, active, positive, motivational line. It's gonna be t-shirt designs to begin with, a lot of t-shirt designs and there'll be hats. Uh, and then, you know, then I, hopefully I can go get into maybe, you know, socks and, and shorts and uh, blankets and things like that. But uh, so, so be on the lookout for um, the new Shaggy Duck brand. And I came up with a new logo. I've uh, had several different logos for Shaggy Duck over the years. But I wanted, because I'm really getting, and then another thing that I'm going to do in 2022 with the book and the art is um, I want to go back to my roots of the 1970s because that's when I grew up and that's the decade that I love. And um, if you didn't know, if you know me very well, you do know, but if you didn't know, uh, a buddy of mine from junior high, um, Todd Wheeler, he and I have been doing the podcast, the 70s Buzz podcast. We've been doing that for four years. We're over 200 episodes um, we're really picking up steam on that, and basically every week we uh, come up with a subject of something to do with the 70s, and we do that. So so with sh the new Shaggy Duck brand and vibe and look and everything, I wanted to redo the logo. And so this is the first sticker uh, that I have done, and if you're listening to this podcast, I apologize because I'm not only recording this as a podcast, but this is also a video on my YouTube channel. So don't forget to go to uh, youtube.com backslash or slash, which, whichever it is, uh, backslash Curtis Tucker TV, or you can just go to YouTube and search for Curtis Tucker TV. And uh, pretty much every podcast episode that I'll be doing, I will be videoing. And uh, just to add, you know, to that format. But uh, so I'm showing the first sticker and it's kind of a uh, metallic-y, shiny looking, which the logo isn't really, you know, the logo is just kind of a uh, kind of a yellow and an orange color, kind of those 70s orange and yellows, but the sticker makes it look really cool. So this is the logo. It's a shaggy duck and it's in a circle, circular pattern with an old 70s font where it's kind of really thick on the bottom of the font and then skinny at the top. And my slogan is uniquely less ordinary. And it says that at the bottom of the sticker. So uniquely less ordinary. Um, is Shaggy Duck, everything that I'm going to be putting out. And at the top uh, of the circle, it's got three little phrases. It says, groovy life, good vibes, far out stuff. And so that's just kind of uh, my mantra or whatever you want to call it. So anyway, um, I do have several of these stickers and I've been giving some of them away to the listeners of um, the 70s Buzz podcast. So if you guys that are listening to A Shaggy Duck Life will send me your address, um, send it to curtis at shaggyduck.com. Send me your address. I will send you a free Shaggy Duck uh, window sticker. These are great for your car. They're great for your office or to stick just about anywhere. But send me your address. I will send you one of these um, round Shaggy Duck stickers for free, and so so that's the third uh, the third part, and I think um, those are the three main projects. And so again, uh, listen to a Shaggy Duck Life because I'm going to be doing a lot of behind the scenes of um, you know how I'm getting that brand started. Uh, real, let's go back really quick to here's a tip for you for the sticker. Um, go to Sticker Mule, and I, I probably should have an affiliate link where I can make money every time you guys sign up, and I don't. Um, maybe I'll try to get that posted somewhere, but um, sign up for the StickerMule.com, Sticker Mule email, and they will email you every week, and they've got these offers, and so I think I got 50 of these metallic-y looking round 
super duper high quality stickers for I think $19. Um, they give you huge savings and each week it's something different. And so I'll be getting a Shaggy Duck t-shirt. They're, they're also doing t-shirts now, which I think I got for $9. And it's just these huge savings and you just kind of, and then they, they rotate and it goes around in a cycle. So if you miss this one, um, you know, just wait a couple of months and it's going to come back around. And that is how I order almost all of my stickers is I just wait for these really great deals on Sticker Mule. And so uh, there's a little tip for you guys there. Again, I highly recommend Sticker Mule. I, they're everything that I've gotten from them, which is tons of decals. Um, are all great. I'm going to step, I'm going to get out of camera view here for a second and grab something else. Um, when I was doing, uh, when I was heavy into starting promoting that buzz guy, uh, one of the things that they sent me an email and promoted was um, coasters. They do those really hard, um, can you guys hear that? Coasters. And so I'm showing again on the video, this is the coaster. Uh, basically, I just sent in that buzz guy logo. And I got, I think, 50 round, really high quality coasters um, for that buzz guy. And I think I've done some other, I've done tons of stickers. They do clear stickers and they do cutout stickers and um, they do pins and they do buttons. And so just get on their mailing list and uh, wait for the uh, offer to come that, you know, that you really like and um, just order a lot of your stuff through there. If you need higher quantity, uh, then, you know, go ahead and use Sticker Mule for all of your orders because you're going to know that the quality is really good. So um, hopefully that is uh, the really great tip that you guys get out of this episode. So anyway, uh, A Shaggy Duck Life is going to be a journal about what's going on in my life, like my birthday today, uh, some parenting things, some, some life lessons, some life things now. I'm 59. Hopefully... I can share some wisdom with you younger people, and uh, if you guys are older than me, please send in uh, your advice to me that I can share with others. But um, it's going to be a lot of behind the scenes of a book, art, a brand, and then also just um, part of Shaggy Duck and Shaggy Duck Studio will be this podcast and the blog. And so the blog is curtistucker.com, but if you go to shaggyduck.com or if you go to um, 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 70sbuzz.com, those feed into curtistucker.com. They just go to different pages. And so I'm trying to funnel everything that I've got going on into shaggyduck.com or aka curtistucker.com. And that way I only have to update one blog, one website. Um, and basically when you go to curtistucker.com, just click on a category. And if you click on seventies, you'll get the, all the posts that have to do with seventies and, and the, the blog and podcast information for seventies buzz. Um, and then other stuff. Then I, I've got my stories of flying with the Thunderbirds, interviewing Garth Brooks, um, just a, a lot of those adventures that I go on as part of Enid buzz or what used to be that buzz guy. Um, I'll be putting all those adventures on uh, the website and this podcast as well. If I interview somebody really fun um, or well-known, a celebrity, especially somebody from the 70s, I will have that on this podcast as well. So uh, this isn't just going to be me rambling every episode. There are going to be, I'll get Todd in here on a couple episodes. I will try to interview some really fun, interesting people. It might have to do with um, being an entrepreneur or it might be with about writing a book or uh, starting an art studio or just you just never know what I'm going to come up with. But I, I hope, um, I know that I am always looking for new podcasts that are kind of fun and interesting and aren't super scripted and aren't annoying. And so please let me know if, uh, if I'm doing anything on this podcast that's annoying because I truly know that are, there are certain things that can get annoying if they're repeated on a podcast. And if you guys can help me get rid of those, then uh, maybe I can get more listeners to this podcast. And so please, uh, just a quick shout out, please go to iTunes or whatever app you use to listen to this podcast and give me a rating and, and some comments. But if, if you have some suggestions on how to make the podcast better, uh, just email me, curtis at shaggyduck.com. 
And I would love to hear from you guys. Again, send me your uh, address and I will get one of these Shaggy Duck stickers to you there. But um, so part of Shaggy Duck, A Shaggy Duck Life will be behind the scenes of the blog, behind the scenes of the podcast, behind the scenes of this YouTube channel. Um, hopefully I can give you guys some tips on uh, doing video. Uh, real quick, uh, let's talk about this video. And so I am videoing, videoing with my uh, iPhone 12 and I have it back facing and I, I am using microphone wise, I probably could be, this would probably be okay uh, for the podcast and the video by not using a microphone, but I decided uh, to go ahead and use a microphone. So I'm using my Rode Wireless Go again. And uh, I'm gonna show this, uh, I've got it pinned to my shirt. Um, and then the other, it's wireless, and so the other part of it is hooked onto the iPhone. And it's got uh, three different settings, which is, um, you know, uh, I can't even think of what the word is off the top of my head. Um, three different settings about how sensitive the sound is, and I think I've got it on the middle setting. But uh, here, uh, so anyway, so I'm using the Rode Wireless Go to record the uh, audio on the podcast and also on the video for this. A new thing that I just bought the other day, which I think is really interesting, uh, for some of you hardcore audiophiles, I'm going to show it to you. I can't even think of what it's called off the top of my head. It's a Rode um, AI Micro. And what it is, it's really cool, is if, you have, if you've ever wanted to do a two-person interview using microphones, especially... Um, lapel microphones on an iPhone, you can now do it with this little contraption here. It just came out from Rode. They are uh, out of Australia. Um, you can get it almost anywhere now. But basically what it lets you do is you plug one end into your device. It could be an iPhone. It could be a laptop. It could be an iPad. It could be a computer. And then the other end allows you to hook two microphones into it, and it doesn't really matter what kind of microphones they are, as long as they go into the, the little um, three-quarter hole, um, it, this device knows what they are and allows them to work together, and so you can do a interview on your iPhone with two microphones, uh, which is pretty cool, which you couldn't do before. Like, um, uh, anyway, um, it's just a really cool, and then in the middle, if you're looking on the video, there's a hole there, and you can uh, hook headphones up and you can hear the levels of your recording. So anyway, a really cool device because um, anytime I've done an interview on my phone, it's always, I've always had, uh, and so th this is the little microphone holder that comes with the, uh, there's a little microphone holder that comes with the, doesn't come with, you have to buy it, with the Rode Wireless Go, but there's really nothing on it. It's just a stick, but you can slide the Rode Microsoft Go into that and put the fuzzy thing over it and it looks and works just like a wireless microphone. But um, so when I would do an interview and I would want to cut out the wind noise, basically I would talk and then point the microphone at the person I was interviewing. They would talk. I'd go back and forth. Well, now, um, you know, I can either use Sense and then here's something for you. Since I bought my wireless Go, of course, you know, three months later, they came out with Wireless Go 2, which is allows you to use two Wireless Go's, which into the same one receiver. So um, if you have the new Wireless Go 2, you don't need this device because you already have two microphones. But since I only had the original Wireless Go, um, I wanted to hook up. So uh, my buddy and I tested it out the other night and I used the Wireless Go. He used a lapel. Uh, microphone and the wireless go was 10 times better than the lapel microphone um, and the levels weren't quite the same and so I would highly recommend even though you don't have to with this little device I would recommend whatever podcast you do try to get matching microphones it alleviates a lot of audio problems um, there's your little uh, podcasting tip so anyway, um, I know I'm kind of rambling on on this episode, but uh, just want to slip it in. Uh, what else have I got for you before I get out of here and start to wrap this up? 
Um, just appreciate you guys. Uh, please continue to check in. Give me ideas if you guys, there are things you guys want me to, to learn or to check into or to let you know. Again, I've worked my, for myself for uh, several, a couple decades now. And so if you want to know uh, some information on working from home, working for yourself, setting up your own studio, uh, things like that. Just let me know. I can try to answer those. If you have a topic or subject you would like me to cover, uh, let me th know that as well. And uh, just uh, send me all your questions and your comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can find me. So, so I'm again, I'm trying to fine-tune everything. So the website is curtistucker.com. The YouTube channel is Curtis Tucker TV. The Facebook page is either my personal one at Curtis Tucker or the page, which will be Shaggy Duck. The, the um, Twitter account I'm using now is Shagheads. And so instead of calling you guys Buzzheads, from now on I'm gonna be calling you guys Shagheads. And so uh, my Instagram account I have turned into Shagheads, and the Twitter account I have turned into Shagheads, and I'm going by the name of Shags. Now, there is a Shaggy Duck uh, Twitter account and a Shaggy Duck Instagram account, but I'm not going to be updating those because I'm funneling Curtis Tucker, That Buzz Guy, and Shaggy Duck all into the Shaggy Shagheads Instagram and Twitter accounts. And so uh, I've been trying to keep those updated. So follow me there if you like Twitter. I really love Twitter. I would really love to have conversations with you guys on Twitter. Instagram, I don't use, I mean, I try to update it a lot, but I don't use it as far as like seeing other people's stuff. And so um, to me, I love Instagram to just post pictures. I've never thought of Instagram as a really heavy social platform where I talk to people. So I just don't interact with people much on Instagram. With Facebook, um, I'm really just getting that page off the ground. So I don't have a lot of interaction or things going on there. So please go to, um, trying to think I do, that is Shaggy Duck. Um, go to the Shaggy Duck Facebook page and like, uh, the page there. Ask me any questions. Uh, I'll try to update um, on all of these pages, you're going to get lots of updates on information and things I run across from the 70s. Uh, if you are not a fan of the 70s, hopefully I uh, can turn you into a fan of the 70s. I'm here in Shaggy Duck Studio. Uh, if you haven't listened to the other podcast, um, I just did recently bought a turntable. I have not played vinyl records in probably 30 years up until I got this new turntable. I love it. Uh, I had sold all of my vinyl records. I had a garage sale for 50 bucks, every single one of them. So I've been slowly piecing my vinyl back together. I've got my Fleetwood Mac. Uh, the uh, front record there is the Monkees. Uh, Michael Nesmith just passed away, but I've got my Monkees record. I've got um, Boston. I've got some Rolling Stones. I'm just basically piecing all those together. If you guys have some old albums in decent condition that you are no longer wanting, you don't have a turntable to play them on, and you just need to get rid of them, send them to me. Um, P.O. Box 52, Enid, Oklahoma, 73702. And I will add those to the collection right behind me. And every time I play one, I will thank you if you uh, donated some to the vinyl cause. Would love to get a big vinyl library of some fun uh, albums. And I'm going to figure out a way of maybe playing an album in the background to have a little bit of fun background music. But I don't want to get tagged for copyright infringement. And I know if I try to play this on Facebook and they hear the music, it'll shut it down. So I'll try to figure out how to, how to do that. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the new um, music intro to this podcast. I did that on GarageBand. Uh, GarageBand is a really cool um, uh, what recording music app on Apple. Uh, I put the podcast together on there. I put the intro and the outro and make any simple edits. I don't I rarely do any editing on the podcast, um, but I do that in GarageBand, and then I export it, and then I upload it wherever on the internet. But 
Um, I did use GarageBand to create um, the music at the beginning. I didn't play the instruments, although I do have my Fender, my American Fender Stratocaster um, in my Seafoam green sitting right here. One of these days I might write my own intro and play it, but I just haven't played the guitar in so long that uh, I just haven't, and so I'm not really um, set up to do that, but um, I wanted to make the, the beginning of A Shaggy Duck Life just a little more groovy, a little more fun, so I hope you guys let me know what you think of that. And uh, again, just give me your ideas. Uh, let me know what you think about the podcast. Let me know if you're watching on the YouTube channel what you think about the uh, YouTube videos. I know this one um, is really static. The one before this, the Shaggy Duck Life trailer, I kind of moved around. I'll probably uh, do that uh, more when I get a new selfie stick. The one that I was using was real wobbly. Um, but I'd like to kind of make uh, these... Uh, if I could find more time, I would make these podcasts and videos a little more fun with a little more background noises and a little more background music and and maybe add some sound bites and stuff and I'll probably eventually do that so hopefully these podcasts will just keep getting better and better as I do more and more um, my goal for 2022 will be um, at least one full podcasting episode every week that'll be 52 episodes in 2022 with uh, maybe some added shorter podcast um, episodes slipped in. So anyway, I'm going to probably try to keep these to around 30 to 45 minutes. Try not to go over an hour. Um, again, I know a lot of you are looking for new podcasts to listen to. Um, hopefully I can keep this entertaining or worthwhile. I don't want to waste your time, but I do want to entertain you. I want to give you guys something fun to listen to. If you are on a piece of exercise equipment, you can do it. Keep going. Please do not give up. Um, consistency is the key. If you're on the treadmill, if you're out on a trail listening, if you are in a car driving, I know a lot of people listen to podcasts um, while they're driving. Um, watch the road. Be careful. Uh, have a great day today, but when you get home tonight or tomorrow morning, start your exercising. If you don't have an exercise program, take this podcast with you, and hopefully I can keep motivating you guys. If I learn any more about um, health or, or anything, I'll keep you guys updated on what I'm doing again. Uh, it's 90 minutes every morning, a little bit of weightlifting, and that's all I am doing. Um, I'm 59. I think today I probably weigh maybe one... 62, um, you know, I'm kind of in that arena on, on how much I weigh right now, but uh, try to stay healthy and I don't smoke. Uh, the only time I drink is if, uh, you know, we're out having a good time and I try to keep that under control so I don't, I'm not a, you know, a five o'clock uh, cocktail type person. So um, that also keeps me healthy, kind of staying away from alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, um, any of those vices. So I've been lucky enough to stay away from that stuff. I don't even drink coffee. I was just telling some people um, this weekend that I have never had a full cup of coffee. I just don't, I don't like the flavor, uh, the taste of coffee. So it's nothing against coffee or caffeine. I mean, I, I get tons of caffeine in my iced tea because I do try to make my tea at least strong enough that I can taste it. Uh, nothing worse than a almost clear a glass of iced tea where it, it's almost like water. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I appreciate you guys so much for watching this video and listening to the podcast. I hope I have not bored you today. Again, thanks for being part of my 59th birthday, and I look forward to reaching 60 years old where hopefully uh, some of these projects are underway and uh, we can start having fun, and I can um, keep you guys updated on where I'm at with those. So have a fantastic day. Uh, you can go to my Curtis Tucker Facebook personal page. Um, I post a lot of my sunrises there. Uh, I will also start posting more of those sunrise pictures on the curtistucker.com website blog. Um, I've learned how to get some really fantastic sunrise pictures with my iPhone. I don't even hardly carry my Canon cameras around anymore because the iPhone uh, quality of the uh, photos and video is just so phenomenal. Uh, and some of the little apps, um, you know, you can edit 
so easily and quickly on an iPhone that you just, I, I, a lot of, I don't even use Photoshop um, for my photos anymore. I just use, I use a, a program called Snap, Snapseed by Google, I believe, and I do a lot of my editing for my sunrises on there. But I, I'm getting ready to do a post, a blog post, about um, give you guys some tips on how to take better pictures. I didn't know how to take you know really very good pictures until I started taking pictures. And as you take more and more pictures, you start to learn. Oh well, if I do this angle, or if I hold my camera this way, or if I take a picture at this certain time and catch these shadows, eventually you start to learn um, all of the really cool, unique uh, techniques. Uh, to take better pictures. So I will share those with you guys if you guys like to take pictures. And I know the internet and social media, uh, video and photo is a huge part of that. So taking the best pictures that you can is a very important part of that. So again, one more time, I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have a fantastic um, December. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. Probably will not get another episode in before Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, might get one in before New Year's. If I don't, Happy New Year to you guys. And I will catch you on the next episode of A Shaggy Duck 